I'll be presenting the Mashable, which stands for Mobile Applications of Secret Handshakes over Bluetooth LE. And that's a joint project with Suman Nath and Jailu from Microsoft Research. So just to give you some context, um, after the Snowden revelations, there's been, uh, there's been noticeable increase in uh, user awareness uh, regarding surveillance and the extent of it. And uh, uh, there's been an increased need uh, among even regular users uh, regarding privacy and security. So users are, in, are interested in communicating with one another, and they're interested in forming communities and groups and uh, basically secret communities and virtual communities. And they also want proximity-based communication, basically communicating with users that are nearby, close to them. And all of that has to be secure. So uh, we have many examples on the Android and uh, iOS uh, app markets. So you probably know Telegram and Signal, which are messaging apps that are end-to-end -end encrypted. And there are more apps like After School, Ligato, Kikiak, which basically provide uh, this capability of forming communities uh, and communicating with users that are geographically nearby. So uh, let's define this uh, notion of secret communities. We have members that want to communicate and identify one another, uh, but they don't want to be discovered by anyone that's not in this uh, community and not, it's not enrolled with it. And uh, all of that uh, while maintaining geolocation privacy, uh, while using this geolocation to disseminate messaging, and basically having some uh, gossip protocol with users that are nearby, that are geographically close to you. So uh, having this anonymous messaging and notification capability. And the state of the art um, in many of those apps, in many related apps, uh, basically uses a trusted central server. And there are many problems with it. So first of all, this central server becomes a target for attack, uh, for um, what's called uh, compulsion attacks, and a, a powerful adversary that is capable of taking, uh, taking hold of the server uh, immediately gains access to um, either the content of the data that's uh, passed between the users uh, because if it indicates it's not end-to-end -end decrypted, but definitely to the metadata and knowing which users uh, uh, used to communicate with one another. And there are other issues like uh, constraints um, and requiring internet connectivity, uh, which is not always available or you don't want to use it necessarily. And also GPS for uh, location, um, basically uh, knowing your location in order to notify the server about it so it can pass your messages to nearby users, and also the cellular communication to the ser uh, that's required to communicate with the server are major energy consumption factors. So our goals are to avoid the central server, and which suggests uh, using P2P communication, and being energy efficient. And using Bluetooth LE, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, sounds like a good idea. So uh, it's a standard uh, for low cost and low bandwidth communication that basically minimizes power consumption it's by design. And it operates on short ranges, which is good for us. Then you can, uh, uh, by design, uh, basically communicate with a nearby user, but not be discovered by anyone else. And it's supported by many smartphone now, uh, smartphones nowadays. Uh, but we don't, if we don't have this central server, there, then there is no root of trust. How do we know that we communicate with somebody we trust? Uh, how can we identify other users in our community that belong to the same secret society uh, without uh, communicating with them beforehand? So the problem with trust is this cycli cyclical, uh, circular uh, dependency on the other user revealing his credential first, but the other user doesn't want to do that because he doesn't trust you either, so we're stuck in this loop. Um, so basically, versus this scenario where you, when you say, I'm Jan and I'm, here's the certificate for uh, me being Jan, uh, we don't have it here because we want to maintain uh, our anonymity until we trust the user. So uh, to the rescue comes this notion of secret handshakes. Um, so two parties don't, do not know each other, uh, and they perform a certain procedure which, if it succeeds, if it fails, uh, first, then the parties don't know anything about uh, um, either, either, uh, neither party learns uh, anything useful. But if it succeeds, they get to know that they belong to the same secret community, society, uh, group, um, reminiscent of a physical secret handshake. And uh, cryptographic secret handshakes provide this capability of establishing the respective roles in the group as well. And 
so uh, this is a useful uh, thing, and uh, what we use in this uh, prototype is uh, an implementation based on a protocol by Balfans, uh, and it's based on pairing-based key agreements. So if the handshake succeed, basically you have an established, uh, authenticated, and encrypted channel with the other party, over which you can communicate if you want, and if the handshake fails, no information is disclosed. And it's also collusion resistant, meaning if one user's credentials are stolen, they cannot be used to impersonate another user in the group. Uh, also, the credentials are compact, which is important for the implementation and integration on top of Bluetooth LE, because we're only allowed to say, send quite little data. And uh, traffic, uh, tra uh, tra tracking. Uh, I won't be addressing it uh, because of uh, the time constraint, but it's also addressed by all kind of unlink unlinkability techniques. So uh, let us just introduce this uh, construct of pairings. Uh, so uh, it's, pr it, it's, not so, it's not so easy to implement, but the basic notion is pretty simple. So we have this map uh, that maps the inputs into a target algebraic group, and it has this bilinear property, which you can see here. And let's see how we construct a secret handshake protocol from it. So we have two parties, Alice and Bob, that do not have to talk to one another. Uh, and the only interaction they, they need to have is uh, in order to en enroll in a secret uh, group, uh, is interacting with this um, dealer that uh, issues a master secret, uh, generates a master secret, and issues them credentials. So one credential will be disclosed, the pseudonym, and the other one will be kept secret, which is the um, secret for Alice and secret for Bob. And the handshake protocol goes like that. So the parties exchange those pseudonyms, and then they apply this bilinear pairing to derive a symmetric encryption key. And those keys, K, N, can be by the properties of pairings, and you can check it on the paper. Uh, they get to be the same if they were derived from the same master secret. So now they can use this symmetric encryption key, which gives them uh, this authenticated uh, encrypted channel, to perform a challenge response protocol, and if it succeeds, they know, um, they know that they basically belong to the same secret group. If it doesn't, they, it doesn't reveal anything. And one option to integrate it into Bluetooth LE, one proposal is um, to look into pairing methods, and now it's not this mathematical pairing, not to be confused, it's uh, the Bluetooth pairing. And there are a couple of methods, and we proposed a new one, um, which first uses one of the, any one of the methods to generate a short-term key. And from then on, it uses standard uh, messages that are in this, uh, defined in the Bluetooth standard uh, to exchange pseudonyms, and later on to basically perform the challenge response. And we reuse the same messages that are defined for a pairing, for a Bluetooth pairing. And there are some limitations. So for example, uh, those messages are limited to 128 bit. Um, which is not enough to generate enough bits of uh, security. For instance, for achieve, we need more than that to actually map it to 128 bits of security, which is at least what we need nowadays. So the other option is using Bluetooth LE advertisement. And uh, Bluetooth is designed to, um, to publish those advertisements, to, to implement those kind of beacons uh, very, in a, very efficiently in terms of energy consumption. So it supports broadcasting advertisement, and clients can scan and filter advertisements of specific type. And we can also squeeze a little bit of data, a little bit of custom data into those packets. So 32 bytes, but for instance, on Windows BTLE stack, we are limited to 20 bytes. But those 20 bytes will be enough to implement, uh, to achieve 128 bits of security um, in our protocol. So uh, the sc scanning is supported, supported uh, by uh, all common smartphones. Uh, the problem is the advertising. So Windows Phone 10 uh, basically provides good support for it. And the Android, uh, uh, Android devices, at, at least at the time of the writing, uh, there was an API for that, but this API wasn't useful because uh, there, was, uh, there wasn't actually underlying hardware support for it. And there are different embedded kits. So, um, that's one consideration in choice of platform. And another one is easy implementation of pairings because it involves all kind of uh, details of uh, uh, dealing with elliptic curves and uh, choices of parameters. And there's been a lot of uh, research and taxonomy work on that. And you don't want to deal with that uh, So, uh, in order to implement it quickly. So uh, we had to choose an existing library. And one, of the, one appealing option is this uh, Java port of the Stanford PBC library, PBC is pairing-based crypto. 
So um, that was appealing, but unfortunately we didn't have, uh, we couldn't use Android. So we ended up with the Windows Phone uh, that supports scanning and advertising, and actually concurrently at the same time, which is important for uh, our protocol, as you'll see. Um, so uh, we based it on the Windows Phone OS, OS 10. And pairings and group operations, the mathematical pairings, uh, were done using the Stanford PBC library, which we ported to ARM, and also written a .NET uh, wrapper. So this .NET wrapper is actually a nice side effect of this uh, project, because uh, now it enables developing more pairing-based script op uh, applications for uh, any Windows universal uh, uh, device, which can be a desktop or a mobile device. And this, the communication between the phones uh, was based on alternation between scanning and advertising and publishing advertisements. So here you can see a diagram that illustrates the protocol. Basically, the, the advertiser and scanner in this uh, case, uh, they're just nicknames for whoever transmits the pseudonym first or listens to pseudonyms. So the advertiser is the party that transmits it first and the scanner replies. Uh, so you can see the exchange of messages and the alternation between the scanning and advertisement state um, that serve to implement this uh, handshake protocol you've seen before. And we evaluated this prototype implementation, focusing on functionality and uh, energy consumption. So the first one uh, was done to see that we actually, it actually works and we don't have any synchronization issues. So we transmitted uh, more than 1,000 handshakes um, in about two and a half hours. And 96% uh, of them succeeded, uh, basically which is basically a pretty good result. It shows that uh, the protocol is viable. Uh, Four percent, um, we, we basically, um, it, it's basically related to all kind of uh, synchronization issues in the protocol, so that's, a, that's an issue for future work to eliminate those uh, 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 synchronization problems that might come up. And the energy consumption, the second part of the experiment, um, so the bottom line of it is that compared to the baseline where nothing is going on on the phone, it's just like the baseline power consumption, um, even the most power-consuming uh, power mode, which is scanning followed by a handshake, and scanning is surprisingly or not surprisingly is uh, less efficient than advertising because Bluetooth is designed to do advertisements very efficiently. So even that enables more than 12, of, uh, 12 hours of continuous operation which is pretty good and basically uh, enables uh, uh, having this phone doing it for a whole work day. So, um, and that's, that's not like the average uh, case uh, and, and not the average ways, uh, way you'll be using it. Uh, the communication overhead is uh, small, I'm skipping it. And I want to mention uh, two more applications. So one of them is head counting. Uh, basically people attending an organized event and uh, you want to count the number of people who attended. And what happens if you want to have a secret event or uh, maintain the privacy of the users attending the event? So current techniques, they basically enable you to track the users or track the event beacon. And those uh, secret handshakes can be useful in uh, protecting against that. And another application is uh, car control, um, which in which the car or the user um, that has a mobile phone transmit a beacon or respond to a beacon from a car. So the beacon can be used for localization of the car in a big parking lot or for unlocking the car. And again, it exposes both the, the vehicle and the user to tracking. And it can also this threat can also be eliminated by using those secret handshakes. So uh, to conclude. Um, I'll just repeat that we presented uh, this secret handshake protocol on top of, implemented on top of Bluetooth Low Energy. And it provides those uh, provable security and privacy. Um, uh, provable because it relies on this, uh, the underlying technique is probably secure. Uh, there's been uh, uh, many works uh, uh, on it. And it's practical and energy efficient. We can uh, implement it uh, nowadays. We can incorporate uh, this technique uh, on top of Bluetooth LE and enables new application. Thank you.